Hi again, Greg Newman here, CEO of Onyx Capital Group. Today I want to focus on the importance of basis risk in oil trading. So there are a lot of different definitions on the internet if you were to look it up on basis risk, but when it comes to oil trading in particular, we have a very particular definition and I think it's actually really, really important in navigating the oil derivative market. I actually think it's something that's really not understood that uh, that well across across the industry and across the people trading um, uh, futures and swaps. And so it's something I, I feel is, is a very good video to dig down on and it helps with the narrative of what we've been talking about uh, with the other videos. So first of all, what is it? The uh, underlying physical oil and the pricing methodologies associated or at, that actually underpin that derivative. So if it's a futures or swap, whatever it is, it will have a particular contract, particular specification, particular region, so an actual area that it will be focused on. So if it's Brent futures, it will be North Sea oil or actually a conglomerate of fields uh, in the North Sea. If it's Arbol gasoline, it will be the equivalent in New York Harbor. But the point is, is that there's these own market dynamics going on and own physical oil and pricing methodologies associated with setting the price or determining the price uh, of that derivative. So what we call this in the industry colloquially is, is market structure. So whenever we say market structure, it's the underlying, uh, underlying market to the benchmark. So why is this so important? Well, ultimately, benchmark futures and now swaps, given how it's growing, they have enormous scale. So I've put the statistic which I've used before, global crude production, you know, 100 million barrels per day plus, is only actually 8% of total Brent futures traded. And that's just Brent futures. That's not including WTI, it's not including um, the product futures. So it just shows you how much the derivative market dwarfs uh, the physical oil. And it doesn't change the fact that all these futures that are traded for many, many different reasons are ultimately all underpinned uh, by these pricing dynamics and by these, uh, this, this area of physical oil that you need to concentrate on. So why is that important? Well, if something's to happen in that particular region, well, if you don't know about it, you're not going to be aware that there could be a huge knock-on impact because that particular region has been impacted. So if it's New York Harbor uh, for Arbol gasoline, if something's to happen in New York Harbor, then Arbol gasoline is going to have a huge, uh, it's going to be a huge knock-on effect on the price action. And it could be something you're not aware of and you can't make sense of, which is our ideal, uh, well, best case that. Worst case, you've actually lost an incredible amount of money because you've made a decision based on something that has nothing to do with the underlying market. So ultimately the lesson is just be aware. If you choose to make a decision for whatever reason, that's fine. It's just about being aware that this is what's going on and ultimately having an understanding of it. So to kind of encapsulate this in an example, uh, December, 20, December 2017, uh, we had a hairline fracture in the North Sea. And again, there's a lot of oil fields in the North Sea, but the particular oil fields that price the Brent Futures benchmark there was a pipeline from Ham Point, Scotland, to the UK, carries about 600,000 barrels per day of 40s crude, so just you know, one type of crude. Uh, but that's actually very, very important to the uh, pricing of Brent futures, particularly when you get into the Brent index, the way that when the futures itself is calculated, the final price at the end of the month, that's underpinned uh, by 40s crude. So we had this hairline fracture, and it was completely unexpected. It was released as news, and the market reacted immediately. Now, it reacted probably more violently in the, in the underlying North Sea uh, swaps and the Brent time spreads, etc., but it still had a knock-on impact on the outright headline price. So people who trade the headline price to reflect crude, production, supply and demand, whatever it may be, um, and they're going to see all this huge amount of volatility all of a sudden on December the 11th, 2017, and have no clue if they don't understand that they need to be focused on the North Sea and be in the know. Uh, to not be surprised. So this graph just really encapsulated, this is where it was. We're actually in a bit of a down move to the beginning of deck. Um, about a $2 move downwards, things starting to come in towards the end of the year, uh, bearish uh, kind of market flows. But we had a jump back and from December 11th all the way to the end of the year and into the next year, we had a considerable rally and actually reached uh, some, some highs, certainly for, for the last uh, few months. All on the back of, or at least driven, by this event that was very localized in North Sea. So 600,000 barrels per day were affected with this pipeline and it didn't even go on for that long. We're talking max, you know, 10 to 15 cargoes actually affected. And that relative to the global oil production is almost immaterial, yet it still had an enormous impact on the bread futures 
because that particular crew that was affected is so important to the pricing of Brent futures. So ultimately, what can impact the underlying market? I mean, we just had an event there, and ultimately that will be the most abrupt situation. But you still need to, when you're digging into analyzing a future or a swap, you still need to go into the, uh, the pricing dynamics. And some of those, they're obviously not all gonna be here, but some key ones are like loading schedules, knowing what's being loaded next month, is it more or less than uh, local demand? Is it going to be impacted for any reason um, because of some uh, deferrals coming from the previous month? Whatever it may be, you just need to have an understanding of the consistency of production. Uh, you need to know the local refinery demand because they're ultimately going to be the ones that are buying that local crude. Are their margins really poor? Uh, is there a reason for them to not buy those particular grades? You need to understand all this to understand how the underlying um, market health is. Uh, and ultimately import and export flows. Uh, again, there's people who map the world's oil production, world oils, uh, sorry, world oil uh, imports and exports. But really, if you're just trying to reflect a review, in, uh, sorry, a view in Brent futures or a particular product future, whatever it may be, actually it's all about understanding the import and export uh, flows within that niche, or definitely as the highest priority. Um, an example of that might be the Chinese importing uh, 40s, again using the North Sea as an example. They only really started doing that uh, four or five years ago. Before that, there wasn't an export flow for 40s to China. It was more to South Korea and to local refiners. So that coming in really changed the dynamics of the North Sea. And if you didn't know that, you're on the back foot when you're trying to express your view with Brent Futures. Uh, so ultimately, how can you be aware? Well, as I say, you need to firstly have an understanding of what we call the structure. You need to know uh, what's going on, why, how, and if you don't know, then you do need to either go and read it, get some kind of education, get some kind of consulting, because you know, really not having an understanding of it, you're gonna be on the back foot, and, and, and I don't think anyone can disagree with me there. Uh, the way you see it immediately is by reflected in the time spreads, flies, and differentials I've put here. So, also if you look at Brent futures or WTI futures, when you then look at the time spreads, the difference between the prompt month and the next month or any month relative to another month, the pricing difference, how those contracts move together on a price basis will give you a sense of how the underlying market is and the health of that market. Uh, but ultimately, where we focus most on is the underlying swaps market. The swaps market, there are many, many, many different contracts. Uh, it's growing all the time and it's much more tightly aligned with the physical. It's not traded as much by macro players, so therefore the price movements tend to be a lot more related to the underlying physical. So you can get your clues and understanding about what's going on by looking at the swaps market. And that ultimately is where Honest Insight comes in. We're the only reporting service actually providing intraday information on swaps and analysis focusing on the swaps because they're so important to how the physical is trading, how it's working, how that ultimately impacts uh, the, uh, the futures themselves and the underpinning of benchmarks where there's so much scale. So having that kind of intel and understanding and analysis on the, in that area is really going to hold you in good stead as you, as you make decisions. So that's it in a nutshell. Thanks very much for uh, listening again. Comment, like, share. I'll be there to read and respond. Thanks very much.